From 1866 to 1896, Tennessee state government adopted the widely used convict lease system to make prisons self-supporting and provide revenue to fund the state debt. Under this system, the state leased prisoners to private companies and made them responsible for feeding and housing the convicts. In July 1866, Tennessee leased its first convicts to furniture companies. In 1884, the Tennessee Coal and Iron Company, which was owned by Thomas O'Connor and Arthur St. Clair Colliar, leased the state penitentiary for an annual fee of $101,000. After 1889, Tennessee Iron and Coal obtained the authority to sublease prisoners to other companies. 60% of the prison population remained as miners for Tennessee Iron and Coal, while the other 40% was subleased. The new system cheapened the wages of honest free laborers, but earned the state a profit of almost $800,000 between 1870 and 1890, and gave Tennessee Iron and Coal, in the words of Arthur St. Clair Colliar, an effective club to hold over the heads of free laborers. The convict lease system fostered a number of abuses, African Americans made up most of the prison population. Tennessee's zebra law put men in prison for crimes as petty as theft of a fence rail. Conditions in the prisons were horrible and the treatment of inmates was extremely inhumane. The quality of food and sanitation was disgustingly low and inmates were often beaten and degraded by the guards. The first rebellion against the lease system occurred in January 1871 when free white miners in Tracy City revolted against Tennessee Iron and Coal for higher wages and an end to the convict lease system. There was panic in Nashville as winter temperatures dropped and the need for coal increased. The miners mounted an assault on the guards to prevent the convicts from working. But the assault failed and Tennessee Iron and Coal emerged victorious. Minor eruptions of rebellion followed over the next two decades until the outbreak of the Coal Creek War in 1891. On July 14, 1891, Miners launched a series of guerrilla attacks at Bryceville in Anderson County, Tennessee. In the initial confrontation, 300 miners surrounded the stockade, took charge of the 40 prisoners, marched them and their guards five miles to Coal Creek, now Lake City, sealed them in boxcars, and shipped them to Knoxville. The miners requested the intervention of Governor John P. Buchanan to protect the rights of labor. Buchanan agreed to meet with the miners, but ordered three companies of state militia to restore order and return the convicts to Bryceville. In his meeting with the miners, Buchanan advised them to seek justice through the courts. When the miners repeated their actions on July 20th, Buchanan agreed to call a special session of the legislature to consider the issue of convict leasing. In cities across the state, many spoke against the practice of hiring prisoners to compete with convict labor. Nevertheless, that August, the General Assembly took no action except to enhance the power of the government to act against rebels and resolve to abolish convict leasing once the current contract expired. Miners renewed and stepped up their rebellion on October 31st, when they once again surrounded the stockade at Bryceville. This time they released the prisoners into the surrounding hills and valleys and burned the buildings and stockade. On November 2nd, the miners conducted a second raid at the Cumberland Mine in Oliver Springs. By the end of December, however, convicts had returned to the mines under militia guard. In August 1892, the miners in Grundy County revolted at two sites operating by Tennessee Coal and Iron. The attacks at Inman and Tracy City sparked renewed revolts in Anderson County. An attack on the stockade at Oliver Springs was met by gunfire, and several miners were wounded. In the end, the outnumbered militia surrendered. The convicts were shipped to Knoxville, and the stockade was burned. This final revolt produced several important results. Public support for the miners disappeared. The violence associated with the last revolt and the public perception of Buchanan's inability to handle the problem contributed to his failure to win re-election in November. The 1893 General Assembly proved more willing to address the issue of convict leasing and passed legislation to construct a new state penitentiary and abolish convict leasing at the expiration of the lease contract in 1896.